a 7-Up Jello salad from 63. Let me tell you, this recipe... <laughs> Cream cheese. Gotta get you fluffy. Half a cup of mayo. This went downhill pretty quick. Water. Fire. Lime jello. More like crime jello. It's like reading directions to purgatory. Whoop. Star of the show. Now we have carbonated mayonnaise lime water. Don't ask me how it smells. Gotta chill. Pineapple and maraschinos. Everything's so sticky. Okay. Cool whip. One, two. Marshmallows. With the mayo. Walnuts. Unholy. See you later. Good morning. Woo. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it's bad. It tastes like aggressively sweet fruit salad put into lime gelato. That doesn't make any of this okay. Amish lard cakes from 1895. Lard, 100% solid pig fat. A disturbing concept. And we're going to fry a dessert in it. Start with one and a half cups of sour milk. They mean buttermilk. Full cup of heavy cream. Oh my. Two eggs. Oh, this is thick. One and a half teaspoons of floof soda. A pinch of salt. Add flour until we get a pie dough consistency. I don't know what type of pie dough you're dealing with. Disturbingly dense. And now we heat two pounds of lard for deep frying. Pounds! Just get out of the box, please. Ah! Let's go, big boy. Wait, you didn't tell me what shape they are. When in doubt, triangles. I'm not ready. Just flip. Cooperate. You are... Oh my god. Hello, lard triangle. You were swimming in animal fat. How does it feel? Then we roll them in sugar. Ooh. That in my stomach like a bowling ball. The dominant flavor is saturated fat. No spices, just cream and poof. I have a sudden urge to hibernate. An asparagus cake from 1980. You know, I don't make these things up. They legitimately get printed in cookbooks for reasons I've yet to fathom. Our kitchen to yours. You can keep it. First, we need two cups of grated asparagus. <gasps> this is food for sheep and people who do yoga. Next is a cup and a half of vegetable oil. Orange rind. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Vanilla asparagus. Really? Eight ounces of crushed pineapple and the juice. Sorry, pineapple vanilla asparagus. My bad. Three eggs. The dry ingredients are three cups of flour, two cups of sugar, pinch of salt, two teaspoons of baking soda, simming in, and a cup and a half of chopped nuts. Mix! Terror guacamole! Bad, bad. An hour at 3.50. Woo! So heavy. Powdered sugar. Orange. Mood juice. Woo! Mm. So it's a nice moist cake, but it's flavored like the underneath of a lawnmower. It's earthy. It's not quite right. A baked bean pizza from 1954. Now I'm scared of lots of things, including the IRS, clowns, and English majors. But I'm most afraid of beans where they don't belong. Oh dear. The sauce begins with a can of tomato paste. <clears throat> Plus eight ounces of spaghetti sauce. Really starting out on the wrong foot. More like the wrong limb. Add oregano for an authentic taste. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in Italy. For the crust, we squash together refrigerator biscuits. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying about authentic? On goes the sauce. A bit of Parmesan. Now 20 ounces of baked beans. What part of Italy are you from? Kentucky? In the center, some fresh mozzarella. How to get an entire country to hate you. Step one, this. 425 for 10, then 325 for 20. No. We can serve this with anchovies or sardines. How about a swift death? Oh. What? Mm, what is wrong with you? Mm. You are sick! Oof. It's just vile. A bologna cake from 1966. What's more American than bologna and cake? Eating it. Pack of cream cheese. A tablespoon of onion powder. Plus two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Boy, honey, this sure does smell like a cake, huh? Luis, I'm taking the kids. <laughs> are you ready for bologna? Good, because there's a pound of it. She says you'll find the rest of the recipe quite intuitive. No, I don't. Certainly not. Your friends are gonna love the circles of indistinct mammal. Normally I'm quite comfortable handling meat, but this is physically disturbing me. The last one. To finish, we decorate with spray cheese. This is giving me emotions previously unknown to man. Mm. Are you supposed to eat this on crackers or on drugs? Mm. It's uncomfy and it's bad. Broiled humdingers from 1967. Don't ask. This is a spam recipe, one of mid-century America's favorite things, right up there next to big cars and being prejudiced. First up, we put our can of spam in a blender. It's gonna be one of those days, huh? Mmm, perfect. If this red flag was any bigger, it would be a blanket. Mm. 
To the ground spam, we add a teaspoon of mustard plus two tablespoons of ketchup, which is spelled catsup. Why? Quarter cup of moo juice and a half cup of oats. I just don't understand. Are there worse things than this? Doubt it. You know, jokes aside, I'm, I'm quite disturbed by this. The next step is to strain our can of halved peaches. Of course it is. The epitome of logic. I think I'm becoming jaded. Oh. Peaches onto a baking sheet. Form some patties. Squish. Mm. Broil these on the top rack for 10 minutes. Maybe they'll disappear. Well, some didn't make it, which is unfortunate because it means some did. Mm. Well, that was utterly horrendous. Thank you. A carrot pie from 1919. Before pumpkin pie became king, people ate this. Now they're dead. Pound of carrots. Reloading. I just love this. Water. Fire. Time for pastry. Welcome to the world. It's awful. Get in, please. Get in the pan. Get in. Moo juice. Only a half cup of sugar. It's time for some eggy finger. Simonim. Time's up. Uh. Combine all ingredients except for pie shell. Were you really worried that I was gonna mix in a fully constructed pie shell into this? I'm a fool, not an idiot. This is frighteningly liquid. Who are you? Hmm. Fascinating. Hold on. It's a pumpkin pie imposter. Bit chewier, but elsewise lovely. Cheese cookies from 81. Call me crazy, but I believe that cookies should be sweet, a dessert, a treat. This isn't that. No, our friends from the 80s have come up with a savory appetizer cookie, so ha uh -uh. We start by melting two sticks of oleo. This stuff also goes by the name of margarine, or wrong. Uh. Then a half pound of sharp cheddar. Mr. Cheese, I'm so sorry. Mmm, sloppy. A teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Worcestershire. A tablespoon of Tabasco. And two cu- <laughs> Plus two cu- I can't say it. Mmm, <laughs> Rice Krispies. I have never seen anything like this. Finally, a pinch of salt. And two cups of flour. <laughs> Bake at 350 until golden brown. <laughs> no. That's not right. Spicy and cakey and crunchy. Just eat cheese. Chipped beef from World War II. Also known as shit on a shingle. Butter. Milk. Fire. Now we have dried beef. I didn't know beef came in a jar. Chop up your dehydrated cow. Pamper bath. Flour. Peppers. Boys, it's time to toast. I can see where the name comes from. <laughs> Mm, no, no. Mm, yeah, it's not good. It tastes like it's insulting me. A chocolate beet cake from 66. Now look, I'm no stranger to cakes with bizarre ingredients, but I think the use of pickled beets is the most unorthodox. We start by blending our 15 ounce can of pickled beets. Juice and all, honey. Uh! There seems to have been a murder. Now into a bowl goes a half cup of vegetable oil, one and a half cups of sugar, a bit of nina, three egg teeth. Whisk vigorously. In go the beets. Oh, it's pink. For the dry ingredients, we need two cups of flour, third of a cup of cocoa, pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. But there's no acid. Oh, the beets. They might be onto something. Get in. Fold. Oh, it's like velvet. About 50 minutes at 375. Ooh. Ooh. For the ganache, we need a half cup of cream and four ounces of chocolate over very low heat. Fire! Just until the chocolate melts and everything is smooth. Oh my. <laughs> Son of a- It's fantastic. Beats? What's next? Chocolate cottage cheese cookies from 1955. This was given to me by my friend Shelby. It's called Quick Dishes for the Woman in a Hurry. In a hurry to take a dump. We start with a cup of margarine. It's like butter, but terrible. Two cups of sugar. Now we beat. That tracks for the 50s. Two eggies. Then an entire cup of cottage cheese. I hate cottage cheese. It looks like it's listening to me. Chunky. For dry ingredients, we need three cups of flour. A teaspoon of floof powder and a half teaspoon of floof soda. Half cup of cocoa. Get in! Finish with nuts. Don't have to ask me twice. Mix. 10 minutes, 3.50. Hello. Oh. Now that's just a good cookie. It is distinctly different, but good.
A chocolate mayonnaise cake from 56. This has been my most requested cake. Of course it's the mayonnaise. Flour! Sugar! Floofers! Today you will rise! Potted cuckoo! Why she smells like chocolate? Mayonnaise! And it's not just a little bit. No, no, it's a severe, unauthorized cup of mayonnaise. Cup of water. Honey, you can't dilute a war crime. You know, it's horrible now, but I hope it turns out okay. Like children. I'm sending you to summer camp. <laughs> For the frosting, we boil milk, sugar, cocoa, and margarine. Fire! Beat in mayonnaise to the chocolate. Do you keep it in your purse? Hello. Maybe if I just don't think about it. Good heavens. Holy fuck. Fantastically moist. The chocolate is tangy. I'll concede you were right. A chocolate potato cake from 1912. This is why we don't perform lobotomies anymore. Boil a potato. Did I mention this was a cake? Skins stay on, unlike Americans. Fire! Cream the butter. Can we at least have coffee first? Butter go boom! Should be a pale white. Eggy! Wakey wakey! Who's tough now? Moo juice! Bloop! Zimanim! Chocolate. I bet this recipe is just all the wrong answers on a baking test. Mm -hmm. Smells like dentures. Go away. Goodbye. For the icing, we boil butter, sugar, milk, and chocolate. My time has come. Not bad, dead people. All right. <laughs> You're not supposed to work! It's incredible, and I'm mad about it. A chocolate sauerkraut cake from 48. Thought this was a joke. Turns out I'm the joke. Sauerkraut. A whole cup. Soak in water and then drain. Better. One and a half cups of sugar. Cream time. You can use a mixer. I just do this to feel something. Eggies three. Flour. Half cup of cuckoo. Baking powder. Mmm. Water. Yummy. Fold in sauerkraut carefully. Or what? I'm gonna ruin your disaster? Can a cake be tried for treason? In she go- I know it's open! Sleep tight. Wow. Bring buttercream and chocolate to a boil. Fire! Okay. Mm, no. Incredible. It feels like coconut. I don't taste sauerkraut. Either chocolate fixes everything or this is alchemy. Chocolate zucchini bread from 1968. Now when I think of zucchini, I think of good barbecue, summer salads. Men, just not dessert. But we start such a dessert with a cup of flour, half cup of cuckoo, chocolate bite, and a teaspoon of floof soda. Now we melt a quarter cup of margarine. Beep. A quarter cup of an oil of my choosing. I'm guessing 10W30 wouldn't work. Cup of brown sugar. Two eggy. For the zucchini, we need one and a half cup shredded skin and all. I hate zucchini. Doesn't taste bad, it just makes me feel insufficient. Wet, dry, meh. This isn't just a chocolate cake recipe with a bit of zucchini. No, this has more zucchini than flour. 50 minutes at 350. Goodness gracious, cease and desist! Come on. It's really quite brilliant. It deepens the chocolate, keeps it nice and moist. I don't make the rules. Chow mein cookies from 1968. Now I'm down for chow mein noodles and I'm down for cookies, but I mean common sense says that they shouldn't necessarily go together. Or do they? We start with six ounces of chalky chips, which is a little more than a cup. Plus six ounces of butterscotch chips. We're off to a good start. Now we simply melt this over a double boiler. Fire! Then we remove from heat and add in five ounces of chow mein noodles. You see, this is where you lose me. Because I think this is troubling. Like, clinically. Or you were subject to a fall from a great height. I'm trying to say you're a little messed up, Teresa from Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> and a half cup of salted peanuts. Some crunch for your trauma. Mix until you cry. Then you just dollop onto some wax paper to cool while you think about your life choices. <laughs> Here we have some choice piles of excrement. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, these, this is just a good idea. The smooth chocolate and the butterscotch with the salty crunch of the noodles and the peanuts, it... Yes. A Civil War cake. Of course it uses lard. Why not? <laughs> Honey, call the police. Two cups of raisins. It's always the raisins. Add one egg of lard. What are you feeding your chickens? You happy? Sister. Ah, fire! A cup of coffee. No. One cup of coffee. This is a misdemeanor. I think I've summoned something. Brown sugar! Eggy! Lord! What do you want me to do with this? They call the CDC. This is the South's revenge. Ah! Flour. Apples. Add nuts. I, how much? I need nut instructions. 
Seminem, woo! Smells deceased. Uh, seems to have collapsed, like the South. Mm. Tastes damp. Wet. Clam biscuits from 1974. Now I love biscuits and I love clams, but do they belong together? Well, as my parents tried explaining to a 12 year old me when they divorced, probably not. We begin with two cups of flour, three teaspoons of floof powder, then two tablespoons of shortening. Vegetable shortenings are great for when you want something like butter, but worse. Please get off the spoon. Please, sir, mix with hands. In goes a half cup of moo juice, then a can of minced clams. <laughs> A little strange, fam, but you do you. <sighs> yep, th those are clams. Oh, it wants the juice, too! Ooh, mix! Drop these into a muffin pan. So are they biscuits or are they muffins? What are you? That's what I used to ask my sexuality in high school. Hello! Ooh. Butter. Mm. Mm. I see. I'm getting a top note of cat food. Like someone dropped a biscuit in a fish tank. Yeah, those taste like low tide. That is to say, New Englanders would love it. Minor cake from 1936. Starting off on the right foot here with a half cup of lard. Hm. If I cut off my feet, do we still have to do this? Ah, yeah. This stuff is great, you know. You can run your tractor on it. Brown sugar! Drizzle of molasses. Is this the coal? Four eggies! They did you dirty. We seem to have made a chamber pot. Flour. Cuckoo. Half cup of strong coffee. Fire! Now we mix baking soda into sour cream. There are too many things happening. Get in! Then we alternate flour. Coffee. Flour. Coffee. <laughs> you are banished! Has it unionized? Looks good, but looks can be deceiving. Oh, you're very dense and pungent. Suppose I wouldn't mind it if I was in a coal mine, but in a coal mine, I'm not. A Coca-Cola salad from the 70s. So this recipe has been floating around the internet for quite some time now, and people seem to think it's from the 50s, but it's not. It's more so typical of the 70s or the 80s or a psychopath. We start with one package of cream cheese, <laughs> into which we dust a package of orange jello. Yeah, that really does say that. That's that. <laughs> oh, oh no. Some high-vis cheese. Department of Transportation certified. Next, we take 10 ounces of Coke and we boil it. <laughs> Fire! This is a very disturbing way to spend a day. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Just what I was feeling for lunch. Carbonated orange cheese gravy. Look away. Lastly, we have a half cup of nuts. At least the recipe is self-aware. <laughs> so we leave this at room temperature for a bit. Then to the fridge. Good morning. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. So first and foremost, it is disturbing, quite, but the potential is there. Because it has this cheesecake vibe, and the flavors are okay. It's just been corrupted. A cottage cheese jello salad from 68. That's not a typo, this is deliberate. Someone published this and got paid for it! Let's not make assumptions, though. We begin with a pint of cottage cheese, followed by a can of crushed pineapple. Well drained, of course. Like my hope. Next, we joyously sprinkle in an entire packet of lime jello. <laughs> Can I start making assumptions now? Oh, come on. Ma'am, do you do you know what a salad is? Because whatever you think, it's, it's wrong. Lastly, we fold in a tub of Cool Whip. Mm -hmm. Ooh, to the fridge. At least nothing hatched. <laughs> Ma'am, no. It's, ju it's just disrespectful. A crusty, sp <laughs> crusty spam bake from 1965. <laughs> you guys are gonna be the end of me. To start, we're gonna need some cornflakes. Promise, I'm not making this up. In your bag, you crumbs. Now we get our can. Oh, we get our can of spam and we cry. Slice into eight pieces using a knife. Thanks for that tip. I was in danger of using a spoon. To the cornflake crumbs, we add two tablespoons of bronze sugar and a dash of cloves. Because why not go full manic? Drain a can of pineapple slices and brush with butter. Just another day in America. Mm. Coat the spam slices in mustard. No, don't make mm. <laughs> 20 minutes at 350. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. It, that ain't it. E. 
Chicano meatloaf from the Great Depression. Yes, this is a depression meatloaf, which happens to be what I call myself when I'm wrapped in blankets at 2 a.m. watching Netflix covered in Pop-Tart crumbs. But anyway, we start with six slices of bread, preferably like my dating life. Stale. Remove the crusts. If you're over the age of six and you still do this, good for you. Don't let anyone tell you how to eat. Move to a bowl. Save the crusts. Add a cup of oats and a can of evaporated milk. The meat remains unseen. Perhaps it's waiting for marriage. Peppa! Two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. I'm not sure if anyone told you, but beef is a cow. You know the mooing? <laughs> Time for just a pound of ground beef. Mm. Mix thoroughly. Mm. <laughs> this is more grain than meat. Get it! Then we add ketchup. <laughs> Press in the bread crusts. Railroad track looking Union Pacific meatloaf. And finally, more ketchup. Bake this in a moderate oven for an hour. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> that is unpleasant. It tastes like it's saving me money. Hard times. A Fiesta Peach Spam Bake from 1954. Yes, folks, Thanksgiving is soon upon us, which means plenty of family drama, so I say why not just cut to the chase, serve this, and make everybody visibly upset. We begin by draining a can of sliced peaches. Save the syrup. Time for spam. Nothing says the holidays like ambiguous meat. Please exit. Now we slice it lengthwise four times, but don't go all the way through. Stunt the spam with cloves. Are you joking? You're not joking. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. 2021's been a a rough year. <laughs> Mercy. Now we insert the peaches into the spam. Open up. Time to receive peaches. To the quarter cup of peach syrup, we add two tablespoons of brown sugar. Are you aware that the syrup is sugar? Mm. Now that's just vulgar. Add the peaches. 375 for 35 minutes. Oh dear. Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> that's not a good laugh, because this tastes like if Christmas gave up. A figgy pudding from 1890. You start with a cup of dried figs. Would have never guessed. And a cup of dates. Chopped. You don't want to choke on your date. <clears throat> Boil with two cups of sherry. Sherry is the potpourri of liquor. It was once very fashionable. Back when people bathed once a week and wondered why there were rats in their wigs. Fire! Once this boils for a short while, we throw in some baking soda. Oh, God. Ah! It smells really festive. Like Febreze in a crypt. Cup of brown sugar and a half cup of lard. Lard! <clears throat> Wet ingredients are a beaten eggy. And just a tablespoon of rum. Then beat with the pasted fruit and sherry. Ugh. Just looks like I microwaved a squirrel. Ugh. Mix. Beat into two and a half cups of flour. Teaspoon of soda. Teaspoon of cloves. <laughs> Bake or steam this. That's all I get. <laughs> we'll meet in the middle. Here goes nothing. It is snowing and this is my book. Huh. Ooh. <laughs> what? God. Are you supposed to eat this for Christmas or for punishment? Stodgy. Tastes Dickensian. I'm sure people loved it back then when they ate lead paint and wood chips. <laughs> Frog eye salad from 1968. Start by boiling a pot of water. Fire! Cook a box of vicini de pepe to al dente. <laughs> you know, the other word for al dente is correct. To a new saucepan, we have a cup of sugar. Dash of flour. Two eggies. Then the juice from all of this canned pineapple. You see this? This is concern. Cook this, drain the pasta. Time to go. Ugh. We've chilled the both of these down and now we start combining. Pineapple, why? The author calls this her comfort food. I call it a mistake. Pound of mandarin oranges. A tub of Cool Whip. A cup of... <laughs> marshmallows. Mm. Add salt if it needs it. It doesn't need salt, it needs help. To the fridge. <laughs> I just don't understand. Yeah, so it's not good. Glorified rice from 1909. We start by cooking a cup of rice. Fire! Are you ready for glory? Cool down the rice gently. Opposed to what? What am I gonna use, a leaf blower? Now for eight ounces of pineapple and eight ounces of candied cherries. But there's rice. We quarter the cherries in half. Quarter the cherries? You're gonna make me stroke out. Precisely what realm of mathematics do you inhabit? <laughs> Finally, we need a cup of heavy cream. I don't like where this is going. And a half cup of powdered sugar. Then we gently whip this stiff th oh, Again with the gently? How do you gently whip cream, you tart? <sighs> it's like saying gently have a car accident. Then you just fold everything together. Get it! Oh, not the rice! What is this? <laughs> to the fridge! Now I'm told that this stuff is still brought to potlucks in the Midwest. Oh dear. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, uh. 
I find that remarkably uncomfortable. People still bring this to functions for consumption. That would give me consumption. Ham and bananas hollandaise. Welcome to the 70s. Four bananas. Peeled. Whoopsie. Boiled ham. Now we need to individually wrap the bananas. This was still the Cold War after all. Fear of communist bananas was at an all-time high. Bake it. Seems logical. Ten minutes. Hollandaise. Oh boy. Eggy. Just the yolk. Water and lemon juice. <laughs> Very hot butter. Careful. Very slowly. Cayenne. My bananas are baked. The 70s. Sponsored by the color beige. Oh boy. Huh? Hmm? Sweet, it's meaty, it's salty, it's uncomfortably appetizing. Hard tack from the Civil War. Yes, whether it's expeditions, famines, wars, or student debt, this is what we bake in times of crisis. We start with two cups of flour, half cup of water. I bet you thought there was more. Nope, there's not. That's right, this is the most basic recipe in the history of history. Talk about stretching a dollar. This is some standex level stretch. <laughs> Oh, you're gluten-free? Sorry, all we have is gluten. We cut them into sad little squares. <laughs> Time to poke some holes. You know, these kind of look like graham crackers, if graham crackers were made out of drywall. We then bake these boys at 250 for upwards of four hours to remove most of the moisture. And that's how these will last longer than even the most talented of men. Dude, these are roof tiles. Well, this is a first. <laughs> Y'all really said Ford tough. Just aggressive. I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It's bread. Danger bread, but bread. Now, of course, you shouldn't eat them dry. But the taste is the same. Ice cream coleslaw from 1973. Now, I don't precisely know the nature of the dystopian demons that must have been inhabiting the minds of the people of the 1970s, but they must have been severe enough as to cause this abomination. We begin with three cups of shredded cabbage. You know, cabbage is one of those things... I have nothing else to add. Next is eight ounces of whipped topping. That's one way to spice things up. Ooh, we don't shame anybody here. Now 20 ounces of crushed pineapple. Did I mention this was in the kids' recipe section? Yeah. Mm. This is why we hate cabbage. Very bad. Finally, we have a pinch of salt and two tablespoons of white vinegar. You, ma'am, are motivated by anger and anger alone. Now we let this chill for about two hours or enough time to sell your possessions and flee the state. Mm. I feel like I'm waiting to be hanged. All right. It tastes like how a dentist office smells. Broken dreams and scattered screams. I, that's the product of an ill mind. A jellied meatloaf from 1931. We begin with a pound of ground beef. You don't want the sky beef, that would be scary. Fire! Who's mooing now? Strain it and let it cool. It's not dinner time until you add a pack of gelatin to some water. Mmm. Onion and celery. 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 <laughs> You know what stings more than a knife, Mr. Onion? Rejection. Now two cups of chicken stock. Time to boil. <laughs> Strain the stock into the gelatin. No veggies allowed. Thank you for your service. Mm. Now that this is thick, we add in the beef, pimentos, and then we mix. This is revolting. No, no, no. What a joy. Mm. To the fridge. Good morning. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect! It's a cat food recipe! Choke! Lard nuts from 1909. Now, if you're in my line of work, chances are you handle a great deal of nuts. It simply comes with the territory and it's a great perk. However, lard nuts do not sound appealing. They sound contagious. Start with four cups of flour mixed with one cup of sugar plus five teaspoons of nutmeg. This lady's spicy. Put the nut in lard nuts. Now we whisk with a fork. You know they invented the tool for that. It's called a whisk. Next we rub in a half pound of lard with the hands. <laughs> I hate this. Next up is three eggs. He's beaten. Put them up. Mixed in again with the hands. Lady loves her digits. <laughs> now we roll to balls. So if you're not sure what a nut is, you're too young. They can be any cookie with a stiff spice dough usually finished with a nut. Which is how most of us finish. 300 until browned. Hi. Hmm. Mm. They taste a bit like mothballs or like an old handkerchief. Oh. Lime Jello Fudge from 68. Typically, fudge involves chocolate, and on the rare occasion it doesn't, it definitely shouldn't have jello in it. Into a saucepan goes three and a half cups of sugar. 
<laughs> that was half the bag. Quarter teaspoon of soda. Ten four, good buddy. Mm. Plus three ounces of lime jello. You ready for a party? <laughs> <laughs> Fruity. Cup and a half of moo juice. That's milk, by the way. Then we cook to 234 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah! Oh, it's foaming. Please stop growing. Oh, oh, oh. Stop! Avast ye! Ow! Ow! It's got ranged attacks! I don't like this. Almost. Keep stirring all the way. Then remove from heat and into a bowl. A half cup of butter. Ah! Beat until thick. Thick! And into a greased and lined 8 inch. What is this? Chill until firm. Do you know what's already firm? My cookbook. It's a hardcover. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like summer camp, like baby bottle pop nostalgic. Huh. Liver cakes from 1947. <clears throat> so the liver is an organ which collects and filters all of the toxins from an animal throughout their lifetime. So why we prance about and eat it is beyond me. With that being said, I've never tried it. Until now. Into a pot of water goes a pound of calf's liver. <clears throat> this recipe asks for calf or mutton liver. But when I asked about mutton liver to the butcher, he just asked if I was okay. Fire! While that boils, we need a quarter cup of breadcrumbs, flour, salt, pepper, plus dried sage, and onion. Then we drain in the what? I don't want to do this! Mince the liver! Ugh. You know I used to have a sock like this? This is disgusting. <laughs> Two eggs! <laughs> get in. Now we make patties. <clears throat> what do you think we fry these in? Lard! Let me get my lard bucket. <clears throat> then you just... <clears throat> Let it large with liver and lard. <clears throat> There's something deviant about this. It tastes like metal. I don't like that. Macaroni biscuits from World War II. So during the turn of the 40s, there was this strange strand of people putting disturbing ingredients into dinner biscuits. Whether it was the product of wartime rations, personal taste, or consanguineous marriage remains a mystery. First step is to cook a half cup of macaroni. Fire! <laughs> Meanwhile, our dry ingredients are two cups of flour, quarter cup of sugar, teaspoon of salt, plus five teaspoons of baking powder. Goddamn. This is a Josh Groban treatment. You can fire these from a mortar. Y'all got me making ballistic biscuits. Strain! Wet ingredients are Three tablespoons of melted shortening, a cup of moo juice, one egg, and the macaroni. Combine the two. Mix. Boop. We got the muffin biscuits. Half hour at 400. Oh, boy. Woo. What? Oh, there's something wrong here. There seems to be macaroni in my biscuit. <laughs> Precisely what you think it would be. It feels like brains. Magic mayo from 1951. What is magic mayo besides a mistake? I don't know, but the first ingredient is sweetened condensed milk. Don't worry though, it's only two thirds of a cup into a jar. It'll just take 12 years, quarter cup of olive oil, quarter cup of vinegar, the yolk of one egg. I find this incredible because mayonnaise is actually dairy free, yet these people have managed to turn this into a lactose bonanza. We finish up with a pinch of salt, cayenne, and ground mustard. Now we seal and shake vigorously, preferably to kill whatever demon we've summoned. <laughs> you know, I used to like mason jars. Then came gentrification. To the fridge! Okay. Mm. Well, that's awful. But nobody eats mayonnaise by itself. Mm. No! It tastes like sunscreen! Milcorno from the Great Depression. What is the cheapest food was the question asked at the height of the depression. So food scientists at Cornell came up with this. We start with a cup of cornmeal. So far so good. Then a half cup of powdered milk. Well, that didn't last long. A teaspoon of salt. Mixed into a saucepan with three cups of water. Chunky. Bring to a prolonged boil. Fire! Just how prolonged is this boil? <laughs> it's done. Now, if this were to be your dinner, you'd add some tomato sauce and some pepper. For dessert, a touch of molasses. And simming him! Mm. 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 Ugh. Tastes like a wet blanket. They're all so sad. Like depressed polenta. Oatmeal that needs therapy. Unemployed grits. Panko cookies from 85. It's been said that there's a cookie for every occasion, and if so, this must be the cookie for when you descend into psychosis. Start with a half cup of butter, followed by a half cup of powdered sugar. 
Next is two teaspoons of vanilla and one teaspoon of almond extract. Distilled nut. Finally, three quarters of a cup of flour and three quarters of a cup of panko. The breadcrumbs. You say, Dylan, why would someone put breadcrumbs in cookie dough? It could be because of like illicit substances or like psychiatric disturbances being held at gunpoint, these types of things. <laughs> Then we scoop, roll, dredge in more powdered sugar, and squish. 350 for about 13 minutes. Do not put my cookbook in the oven though, it's flammable. Mm -hmm. Hello! Once they're cool, we dredge in powdered sugar again. Was the first time just for practice? <laughs> this person is genius. Because <laughs> I figured out how to make something soft, chewy, and crunchy at the same time. It's a marvel. It's a good cookie. Peanut butter onions from the Great Depression. Like kissing women, stuffing onions full of peanut butter feels rather unnatural to me, but I suppose desperate times call for desperate measures. Start by French revolutioning our onions. <laughs> now you can use any type of onion, but I use the round ones. The only type I can find. We need to create a flat bottom. <laughs> Let me get some reference. <laughs> Perfect. Time to scoop out the middle. Oh, boy, this onion's strong. A military grade. God damn. Woo! Okay, now that we have a hole in our onion and we look like we've just come from a wake, we need to stuff it. For that, we need a quarter cup of peanut butter. <laughs> mixed with half as much breadcrumbs. Why? I suppose it is called the Great Depression for a reason. You know, I don't typically stuff vegetables. Mix! Much prefer stuffing fruit. Do we really just bake this? <laughs> we do. 375 for an hour. <laughs> ah! A presentable dish. Honey, this has a face made for radio. Closed casket funeral. It's not so much bad as it is unsettling. Simply just no need to do any of this. Mm. Peanut butter soup from 1941. So this cookbook was put out by the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company to make sure people were getting adequate nutrition during the war. And this soup here is apparently the perfect meal when it comes to ideal macronutrient intake. We've come a long way in 80 years. Into a saucepan, we start by melting five tablespoons of lard. You know, in the story of my life, lard is the closest thing I've ever had to an... Nemesis, fire! Once the lard is melted, we make a roux by whisking in five tablespoons of flour. <laughs> now that we've got some color, we mix in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. <laughs> diluting it with the same amount of water. <laughs> Finally, we have a pinch of salt and just a half cup of peanut butter. Get in! Oh, it is, this is thick. Today we're serving up hot beige. Come get your bowl of brown. Give me a I don't understand. This dish has no idea what it's trying to be. It is confused. It isn't terrible. It's just an unfortunate way to consume peanut butter. A peanut pie from 1941. Courtesy of the Caro Kid, who I can only describe as an infant male escort. Ready? Work with me here. You need a haircut. Any big plans for the weekend? Whole cup of Caro. A cup of sugar. So you want sugar with your sugar. Diabetes go buh! Eggy! Eggy shell. You didn't see anything. Margarine. Vanilla. Eight ounces of peanuts. Mm -hmm. All right. Stop looking at me. <laughs> Avast! Oh, God. What have you done? Oh. Demon baby! What did I do? It tastes like crunchy diesel. A pepper cake from 1915. Instead of regular flavorings, this cake uses peppercorn and caraway, which is an interesting idea because it's awful. Half cup of butter. Sugar. Uh, Too eggy. You hate to see it. And a cup of syrup. What do you want, Miss Butterworth? <laughs> Ma'am, this is very runny, like me in an hour. To a half cup of sour cream, we add an entire tablespoon of cracked pepper. Caraway. And then the fluff. Introducing the world's worst dip. Get in! Flower. A cup of raisins. Love those. Mm-hmm. Agents. Yay. <laughs> Bacon oven. Well, at least you specified the appliance, huh? I was gonna bake this in the dishwasher. Hmm. Oh. Oh. It's bizarre. It tastes like an identity crisis on a plate. A perfection salad from 1961. In typical 60s fashion, we're using gelatin. We meet again. Nothing says salad like animal collagen. Ugh. Half cup of boiling water. Fire! <laughs> Apple cider vinegar. Lemon juice. Bit of salt. In you go. Now we shred celery, carrots, and cabbage. Always wash these real good. Celery's just like your parents. Dirtier than you think. <laughs> This was supposed to be a fun way to get kids to eat their vegetables. How'd that work out, America? Onion powder! Pepper! <laughs> okay. What's the point? Oh. A loaf pan? Really? I just love when my salad comes in a brick. Good night!
Bye. Good morning. It's time for mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> What have you perfected? Garbage! It's cold, limp, and crunchy, and bad. A pickled cheesecake from 72. Says this cheesecake stands out because it's savory. You don't think it has anything to do with the pickles? We start with a pretzel crust. <laughs> Melted margarine. Mm. Time for the filling. Pound of cream cheese. Cup of sour cream. Goat cheese. And some pickle juice. Beat until soft. Honey, I don't need instructions. I'm single. Egg. Parmesan. Garlic. Onion powder. And red pepper flakes. At least it's hot garbage. Now for the star of the show, an entire cup of dill pickles. Mm. Smooth top. Yes. 45 minutes at 3.50. Good night. Oh boy. Mm. Mm. No, it, it's a demon quiche. A polka dot prune loaf from 1951. So we're either gonna be polka dotting the loaf or polka dotting the toilet. I know where I've got my money. Start by cooking 28 prunes, which is actually 28 too many. Water, fire. Three cups of Bisquick mix. Not sure if I'm curious or scared. Eggy moo juice. Now we form a dough. I wanted to make this last year, but I couldn't because there was a toilet paper shortage. Roll out and cut into 28 squares. Don't look at me. I couldn't tell you where this is going. I just know it's the wrong destination. Melted butter. Sugar. Zim Then we wrap and dip each prune before going into a loaf pan. This has to be the most complicated laxative on the planet. Dip. Spice in the pan. Keep the balls arranged closely. That is solid advice. First row done. Row two. Top the third row with nuts and bake. I don't know about this. <laughs> Between the bisquick and the prunes, it's just very odd. Plus it's liable to punish the porcelain. A poor man's cake from the Great Depression. The Depression was bad, right? People were crawling around on all fours in their yards eating dandelions. No, that's not an exaggeration. Those who were better off, like Ruth here, came up with recipes like this. Though bless her heart, she couldn't spell raisins. That's okay, Ruth. We start by cooking one cup of said raisins with two cups of water. Fire! We're boiling this until it reduces by half. Mm -hmm. Then we beat in a whole cup of shortening. I mean, I think that's a little excessive. This, this, mm. in goes one, eight, keep. Plus a teaspoon each of ground cloves, allspice, and simonium. Ruth, I don't think that's gonna help. Finally, we add one teaspoon of baking soda and two cups of flour. Get him! Oh, this does, this does not look right. There are no baking instructions at all, so we're just gonna do 350 for Lord knows how long. About 45 minutes. Did you notice there was no sugar? My legs are shaking, and not in the good way. Mm. Mm. Well, that tastes like a diagnosis that is severe. A poor man's pie from 1949. Now this has to be the simplest pie recipe I've seen during my time on this earth. <laughs> I'm not even sure this is going to make a pie. But first, pastry. Good afternoon, Mr. Pastry. How you been? How's the wife? How, How you like that? Welcome to the real world. For the filling. <laughs> For the filling, we have a pint of cream, cup of sugar, three tablespoons of flour, and that's it. <laughs> if this is a pie filling, then I'm Captain America. And then in it goes. Mm. We do get to sprinkle nutmeg on top. How extravagant. In this goes at 425 until it sets like a custard. I have no idea. Mm. It looks upset. Mm. Well, it's great. So long as you don't have to eat it. <laughs> it's sweet goop. I don't get it. Cause now I'm still a poor man just with a mediocre pie. Poor man's rice from 79. How do you make rice without rice? I say it's impossible, but our friends from the 70s disagree. We start with a third cup of water. I hate third cups. I don't have a reason and I don't need one. Three eggies. Mm. Water and eggs. How very rice-like. Pinch of salt. Two cups of flour. I don't know where this is going either. Probably downhill. We're looking for a breadcrumb consistency. Not me. I'm looking for why. I thought rice was the poor man's food. I would know. I have a music degree. Time for hands. More flour if needed. What? Done. I think, I don't know. Now into a very large pot goes three quarts of water. Mm. Stock cubes. I'm using beef. Fire! Get in! Ugh. It's like the world's worst oatmeal. Cook for 12 minutes. What? I don't... Mm. 
Um, what? It's not unpleasant. It tastes like overcooked pasta. It feels like oatmeal and looks terrible. It evokes nothing of rice and I don't know why this exists. A pork belly fruitcake from 1915. Meat and desserts was quite common back then. So was botulism. Steep a pound of pork in a cup of water. Fire! <laughs> Honey, would you like Earl Grey or pork? I'll take a divorce. Sugar! No. Cup of molasses. Sweet, bitter, and meaty. Like my ex. Yeah, why is it foaming? Do you think you could hear me? Currants. Peel. Apple juice. What? Ginger. Don't say it, Dylan. Simonyam. Needs flour. One, two, three. How big is this cake? Ah! 350 for two and a half hours. Suppose any less and it might gain consciousness. Chungus. She's looking like a house foundation. All right, we got two fruitcakes here. Ah. Uh, hmm. Mm -mm. What's scary is that it's not terrible. It's got this oily richness to it, but something just ain't right. I think it's the pound of pork. Potato chip cookies from 76. Now sweet and salty things aren't anything new. You have classics like PB&J, chicken and waffles, fake friends, your in-laws. But this is crazy. One cup of butter, a cup and a quarter of sugar, cream. No, that would be very indecent. Butter go butter. Aren't you fluffy? Two eggy teaspoon of vanilla. <laughs> Now's when we smash eight ounces of potato chips. Mm, goodbye. Look who's fallen from grace. Shame. Two cups of flour. Three teaspoons of fluff powder. <laughs> now in goes half of the potato chips and a cup of chocolate chips. Oh, that's crunchy. Chill time. We're gonna roll the dough in the potato chips. <laughs> You're insane. 15 minutes at 3.50. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, I mean, the potatoes, the whole bag of potato chips. It's phenomenal. Wow. A prune pie from the Great Depression. Why just live in the Great Depression when you could also have chronic diarrhea? Wants me to plump in my prunes in water. I ain't plumping my prunes in nothing. Buy me dinner first. Pastry! Are you getting plump? Is plumping even a verb? I have birthed you. Easy does it. Blind bake the pie shell. That was distasteful. It looks like a failed grave robbery. Crust complete. Fire! Sugar. Prunes. Smells like botulism. It's 10 p.m. and I'm boiling prunes in my kitchen. Walnuts ain't gonna save this recipe, sweetie. Beat egg whites. How many? <laughs> Stiff. Fold together. How does one know when a laxative is done cooking? Alrighty. Huh. You know, it's not bad. It just vaguely tastes like a felony. Prune whip from 1927. Now, if you've never had a prune, good. It's best not to engage with the enemy. Prunes are just plums post-mortem. The Draugr of the Fruit Kingdom. Start with 15 of them all chopped up nice and disgusting. Love, I love it here. Why 15 of them? Why any of them? Why prune? How prune? <laughs> then into a pan to be cooked with a half cup of water. Fire! See, prunes are primarily used because they're a stellar laxative. You say, Dylan, how else are they used? Threateningly. Now we strain it and let it cool down, preferably forever, never coming back, and into a bowl goes the whites of two eggies. Pinch of salt, beating stiff. Ah. Cup of sugar. Ah. Ooh. And we fold in a bit of vanilla. And our cold prunes ah. into a serving dish. Well chilled. My cookbook. Garnished with slivered almonds. You say, Dylan, that's not cooked. Correct. Uncooked whips such as these were very popular in the 20s, alongside dysentery. Uh, good heavens. Oh, no. Oh. This is foul. Oh, dear. <laughs> A ration cake from World War II. So it's the 40s and we don't have any butter, sugar, milk, or eggs, and we need to make a cake. What do we do? Panic! Into a saucepan goes two cups of raisins plus one cup of water. In the interests of civil defense, we look to raisins to substitute our sugar. So you want me to boil raisins? It ain't easy being a patriot. Fire! This is awful. A half cup of lard. Just give up. Don't make a cake. <laughs> a whole cup of molasses. No, th this is not worth it. It's not. Looks like barbecue sauce. Smells of death. For the dry ingredients, we need one and a half cups of flour. Half teaspoon of baking soda. And the only spice we get is cloves. Cloves. <laughs> it's always the cloves. Mash the raisins. It's been nice knowing you. This would make me enlist. Mm, get in. <laughs> get off. 325 for an hour. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, ma'am. Just no. Oh. Polo Ritz 
it's sandwiches from 79. I'll tell you, I wasn't gonna do this one because it seems rather pedestrian, unlike cars. First up, we'll be needing some crackers. We've got some in a box here and one in a t-shirt. Use as many as you'd like. Come on. This feels familiar. Lay half face down on a baking sheet. Get some Rolos. <laughs> Throw them on the floor. <laughs> Please remove the wrappers. Aluminium has no nutritional value. And you just place them on top. Then we bake at 350 just until they're soft, around three minutes. But keep an eye on them. Yours may get softer sooner, depending on your level of arousal. Did you know my book comes out soon? Of course you did. I never shut up about it. Woo! Toasty. Then we carefully sandwich. This has no right being this satisfying. Yeah! Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Yes. They're perfect. Not because they're gourmet or anything special. They're just a really good idea. A really good tasting idea. A roughage loaf from 1892. Now my first thought was who comes up with this? And then I took a look at the front. My man looks like he does taxes for fun. We start with an entire cup of wheat germ. Roughage is what dead people call fiber. And this is enough to incapacitate one medium child. Half a cup of flaxseed. You sure this wasn't meant for a bird? One cup of buttermilk. And a cup of molasses. This takes a while to come out. Don't worry, I did too. Mm. Then we leave this to soak for half hour, just to make it edible. Half cup of prunes. No, of course it's the prunes. What else would it be? This man's really out here making people B-52 their toilets. This is either gonna plug you up or bring the morning thunder. Your boy said friendly fire. Cup of whole wheat flour. Have you no mercy? A teaspoon of floof soda. Get in, prunes! Mm. This is culinary terrorism. 350 for 40 minutes. When I tell you that this is a brick, I mean it. It is a piece of masonry. Ooh. Tastes like a bookshelf. Books included. That is bad. A seafood mousse from 1972. So they describe this dish as an elegant and fancy way to elevate family dinners. However, upon first glance, I would describe it as an ornate pile of sh. Start with a cup and a half of canned crab. I love crab in a can. Yay! <laughs> Why does it have a diaper? Is the crab diaper integral to this dish? Well, you never know. Cup of celery. Celery! If water was a vegetable. <laughs> Marinate this in some lemon juice. Tabasco. Worcestershire. <laughs> My car on a cold morning. Worcestershire sauce. Salt. And onion powder. Now atop a double boiler, we melt eight ounces of cream cheese in a can of tomato soup. Fire! Now to a cup of water goes three packets of gelatin. You knew this was coming. It's like watching a car crash. <laughs> I move this to an ice bath. Once it's thickened, we fold in a cup of mayonnaise. Whatever you think elevate means is wrong. Finally, our crab. It's just morbid. To the fridge. No. Huh? Whoa. Oh. That's fancy, all right. Fancy feast. Some good cat food. A plus. A shoe fly pie from 1900. A favorite of the Pennsylvania Dutch who apparently have this for breakfast. Now that's what you call bravery. No, 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 no. No sticking. You're gonna die here. Yes. Time for filling. An entire cup of molasses. Very cheeky. Three quarters of a cup of water. And one very lonely, very dead eggy. A teaspoon of baking powder. What exactly are we trying to raise up? Hope. Bigger with whisking. Very wet. We get to make a crumble. Sugar. Flour. Then some lard. What is it with dead people and their obsession with this? <coughs> yes, I just love bacon. <coughs> oh, hello. Ooh. That's molasses. Very sweet, very bitter. If you love molasses, this is the pie for you. A soured raisin pie from the Second World War. Now I know this is gonna be awful because it calls for soured milk, not buttermilk, not milk and vinegar, no honey. Soured bad milk! Oh, she's thick! The raisins! Use butter pastry for flavor. Flavor! Three, two, one! Blast off! To the toilet, a cup of sour cream. Disgusting wasn't enough for you. Call the UN. Add spices. Thanks for that. What goes well with IBS? Brown sugar. Smells like Normandy. Charming. Bake until done. You're a piece of work. Goodbye. <laughs> the pothole. I should have gone to church. Yeah. Oh, oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Tastes like a shower drain or a bunion. A spaghetti o jello ring from the 60s. Now I've been unable to confirm whether or not this recipe actually existed in the 60s. Not that I particularly want to, but seemingly everybody and their dog has sent me this. <laughs> Into a saucepan goes a quarter cup of tomato soup, quarter cup of water! Now two packs of gelatin! Wonder what demon we'll summon today! Fire! <laughs> now that this is completely smooth, we remove from heat and add two cans of SpaghettiOs! Is life insurance expensive? Into a bunt. Oh. 
Good night. Ooh! Did I mention there were sausages? Cause there are sausages. I don't want to. Do I don't want to do it. A spam pie from the 1960s. A little late in the century for war crimes. Crust is saltines. Downshift. <laughs> Boda. Eggy. Marjoram. Are you just making things up? Who are you? You know, I've never been particularly religious, but today might be the day. A cup of evaporated milk. Have you lost the plot? I feel like if I do this correctly, I'm gonna invoke the spirit of Richard Nixon. This ain't food, honey. This is a bioweapon. <laughs> Cheddar, you're a monster. Liposuction looking. Decorate with almonds. D decorate? How do you decorate a tumor? He says, don't worry, they'll toast in the oven. We're not concerned about the almonds. I am in utter fear. Oh, salt! God damn! Yeah, this is severe. Tastes like an IHOP kitchen floor. Sunflower cookies from 74. So these were part of the hippie health food craze, which I didn't know was a thing. Seems they enjoyed baking in more than one sense of the word. To a half cup of butter goes a cup of brown sugar. Mix! In goes two eggs. Half a cup of flour. A teaspoon of floof powder. And half a cup of wheat germ. Oh no. Move, Hollis. What's wheat germ? Nothing good. It has the pleasant taste of wood chips. Earthen. Yeah. I let the set get all nice and miserable. The wheat germ just needs to swell up like an infection. Soaks up the butter in everyone's happiness. Next is one and a half cups of shelled sunflower seeds. This is just bird seed. Food of the birds. Avian. Oh no. <laughs> Do you have friends? Are they birds? Make this for them. Their little bird beaks and bird mouths will love it. Half cup of pumpkin seeds. Don't even chop them. No. Nope. <gasps> yeah, they let their bird stomachs digest it. Feathery freaks. <laughs> 350 for about 12 minutes. Now they can smell it. You know what birds can't do? Read my cookbook, as far as we know. Uh, mm. These taste like a damp park bench. Uh, Sorry, hippies, I'm with Nixon on this one. Oh. Survival bread from 1972. This bread is claimed to last upwards of seven years, or roughly the amount of time it's taken me to get my bachelor's degree. We start with a cup of sugar, quarter cup of honey, the same of water. Then we bring to a boil with a pack of lemon jello. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that jello is inevitable. Oh, we love jello. Shut up! Fire! For the dry ingredients, we need two and a half cups of powdered milk. Two cups of oats. <laughs> oh, stop, stop! How am I gonna survive the apocalypse if I can't survive oats? Once whatever this is has boiled, you add it to the dry. Oh, shit! Add a bit of water if we need to. Sweetie, this needs a lot of things, but water isn't one of them. Then we mold it into a brick. <laughs> so thick! 30 minutes, 350. Huh. This is an enigma. It is quite dry, but not in a bad way, like a biscotti. I would take this camping. Tomato aspic from 1939. Yes, this is arguably the most infamous dish of the 20th century. At one point, it was on every menu from coast to coast. We start with three cups of stewed tomatoes, then a onion. What is the size of this onion? This thing's heavier than my self-doubt. <laughs> Mm. One celery stalk. Slicey slice. And now for the most pointless herb, the bay leaf. I think of these like small men. You'd have a hard time telling whether it's in or not. A pinch of salt and sugar, plus a single clove. So what are you doing tonight? Into a pot. Fire! Cooking for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we soak two tablespoons of gelatin in a half cup of water. Now we strain this to remove any trace of reason from the dish. Yeah. And the gelatin. I don't like the look of this at all. To the fridge. Whoop. What do you think we garnish this with? Did you guess mayo? Stop jiggling! And some paprika. <laughs> this is just a commendably daft idea. It tastes like somebody killed Italy. It's like geriatric ketchup. A tomato soup cake from 1950. Ah! What's the difference between margarine and shortening? The amount of time spent on the toilet. Need reinforcements. Sugar in a carton. <laughs> Creamy. Sift your flour three times. Lady, your cake has tomato soup in it. This is the least of your worries. Clove, cinnamon, and nutmeg. With the soup. Can't hide from me. I wish you could. Bloop. Simming him? No, no, no. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, that lady Carol is at the barbecue again. Careful not to overmix. Sorry, I'm just trying to kill it. it. Smells like a hospital. Tomato spice. If pumpkin spice got hit by a bus. At least it's not moving. Icing. Ah. Shut up. <laughs> Doesn't taste like tomato. 
Tastes like chocolate. A trench cake from World War One. In the Great War, people dug holes and threw things at each other. It's a bit like a children's sandbox, just with an abundance of missing limbs. Start with eight ounces of flour, to which we rub in four ounces of margarine. <laughs> to be fair, my only real issue with margarine is its existence. Also, do notice how we don't mix cakes like this anymore, because we're no longer daft. In goes three ounces of brown sugar, followed by two teaspoons of cocoa. Ah, yes. The LaCroix method of adding flavor. Just enough to make you realize what you don't have. Half teaspoon of nutmeg and ginger, plus three ounces of currants. Ounces are my least favorite unit. Unlike my cookbook, which is an absolute unit. Finally, we need a quarter pint of moo juice. <laughs> Give me a normal measurement. A teaspoon of white vinegar and a half teaspoon of bicarbonate. Bicarbonate. I think you'll push. Oh, sick. Moderate oven for about an hour. Ooh. It's not awful, but it is sad. If someone said that to me in the trenches, I would give up. Tuna salad jello, you bet. What are you doing with that tuna, Dylan? Oh, you know, making jello. 1969 Lubbock, Texas community cookbook. Cup of water, salt, fire, half a red onion. This was written by Mitchell White. Of course that's his name. This recipe is making me cry, not the onions. Gelatin vinegar. Already smells like death. In you go. Really, Mitchell? I want to know who hurt this man. Celery. Make sure to chop it up all fine and disgusting. Five ounces of albacore tuna. Are we sure this recipe wasn't written by a cat? Was Mitchell a cat? Now we wait. Oh boy. Oh. How did we get to this? I do this for you. Oh, oh. Mitchell! That's not food. This is a war crime. Velveeta fudge from 1984. There are a lot of ways to make fudge, most of which aren't as problematic as this, but then again, who are we to fault the 80s? Start with a cup of butter in a heavy pan. I reckon this is a heavy pan. Heavy with the burden of whatever crime it is I'm going to commit. We melt that down with a half pan. <laughs> half pound of Velveeta. Neither scientist nor scholar knows precisely what Velveeta is. It is the occult, the great unknown. Fire! Well, this is already critically disturbing. In goes half a cup of cocoa powder. <laughs> it's cheesy. <laughs> Next up is two pounds of powdered sugar. Hold on. <laughs> yes, I see. It's the whole bag. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I'm not sure how this whole bag's gonna fit in here, Mildred. Her name is Mildred. This is not gonna work. It's not. Oh, no way. Oh, it's alive. <laughs> Finally, you take off the heat and add in some nilla. Oh, it's like a tumor. To the fridge. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that's a good fudge. A vinegar pie from the Great Depression. A modern take on home baking. Sir, your phone number is four digits. Pastry. This is my son. Get a little bit dusty. Uh, you're gonna want a deep nine inch. Don't we all? Blind bake at 350. Eggy. No, officer, there's no shell in here. Sugar. Add your Paula Deen extract. So far, so good. Vinegar. I take it back. Wakey, wakey, time for school. A dash of sorghum. Well, I don't have sorghum because I don't have a life expectancy of 12. <laughs> That's the power of pine salt, baby. For thine is the kingdom. Bake to your liking. Sweetie, none of this is my liking. Don't come back. It came back. Nah. Uh, heaven. <coughs> this is what I'd imagine a toilet brush to taste like. A wacky cake from the Great Depression. So the stock market's crashed and we can't afford any butter, eggs, or milk. But little Johnny still wants a cake for his birthday. Selfish brat. Directly into a cake pan goes a cup and a half of flour. A teaspoon of floof soda. Bloop. One of the reasons this is called a wacky cake is because you don't need a bowl. Though living in the Depression, I think everyone needed a bowl. A cup of sugar. A third of a cup of cuckoo. Then we just mix it with a fork. <laughs> Now we make three wells. I feel like a gardener. Do you guys remember Farmville? Those were the days. Into one well goes two tablespoons of vinegar. Next, a third of a cup of oil. Nilla. And finally, a whole cup of water. Just mix it in the pan. Bake this at 350 for about a half hour. Ooh, it's a cake. Cool completely in the pan. For the frosting, we need a cup of powdered sugar. Two tablespoons of cuckoo. And slowly add water until thick. Beautiful. What? How did that not stick? Are you a witch? <laughs> this! Yes! That's a darn good cake. 
an emergency war cake. No eggs, no milk, no butter, no joy. There's no sugar either. Is this the cake? Two teacups of raisins. How am I supposed to know how big your teacups are? Ira, one teacup of dates. Why do dead people like dates so much? Bam! Fire! Cup and a half of molasses. Pretty sure this is how diesel is made. Cinnamon! Ira needs cloves. Easy does it. Wouldn't want to ruin a disaster. <laughs> Here goes nothing. What in good God is this? <laughs> Ira, honey, I'm going to war. Over what? You're cooking. Come on! This is the only cake that looks burnt before you bake it. Uh... Oh, dear. <laughs> Mm, tastes like a boot. Like a size 10 boot. A water pie from the Great Depression. Can you bake a pie with four ingredients? Yes! I could also eat my mattress. Fire your oven. I'm sorry, but we have to let you go. Pastry! It's been 13 months. What if I told you I hate pie? Oh boy, it fits! Fork it! Not that desperate. Blind bake the pastry. That's rude. Are you still here? Damn it. Add three gills of water. This is written for a fish. Is this a joke? Sugar! Flour. I think this qualifies as a pre-existing condition. Unconstitutional! Top with butter. We're not even at a red light. This is not legal! <laughs> Alright, it finished a bit early, like my ex. <clears throat> it's a breast implant. No, oh, ma'am! Very bad! Tastes like lint. Soggy lint. 